Welcome to Light of the World Ministries. This is Chaplain Bob. This is going to be part of the blindness series, but it's going to be a standalone part. Our opening verse is Isaiah 45 and verse 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Wow. How does a holy, righteous God create evil? Good question. Let's check it out. So, let's take a look at Isaiah. 45, and I guess we'll start with verse 1. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him. And I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaved gates, and the gates shall not be shut. Now Cyrus, if I, memory serves me correctly, Cyrus was the one that took over uh, Babylon from King Nebuchadnezzar's son. In the book of Daniel, the writing on the wall, well, that's what this is in reference to. Cyrus the Great um, captured Babylon, and he was the one who allowed Judah to return to Jerusalem under Ezra and the book of Nehemiah, the book of Ezra and the book of Nehemiah, where they rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem and redid the temple. So that's what this is in reference to. Verse 2. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness. Now well, that was, what was the treasures of darkness? Was that not the, uh, the, uh, the wickedness in Babylon? the treasures of darkness. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though, though thou hast not known me. That thou may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. Now think about it. If there is no light... All you have left is darkness. If there is no heat, there's nothing but cold. Cold is basically just an absence of heat or warmth. And darkness is nothing but an absence of light. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. So when there is no Jesus, all there is is darkness. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open, and let them bring forth salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Let the potsherd strive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, What makest thou? Or thy work? He hath no hands. Woe unto him that saith to his father, What begattest thou? Or to the woman, What hast thou brought forth? Thus say, saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his maker, Ask me of things to come concerning my sons, and concerning the work of my hands, command 
ye me. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens, and all their host have I commanded. I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his ways. He will build my city. He shall go. He shall let go my captives. Not for price nor reward, saith the Lord of hosts. So, and that's what uh, Cyrus did. He let, you know, the uh, Judah was, Jerusalem, Judah and Jerusalem were evil and wicked. And under Jeremiah, they warned the people that they were going to go into captivity for 70 years. And they did. And then Cyrus came along, destroyed the Babylonian Empire, Babylon. And then guess what? Judah returned to Jerusalem. So what's this deal about the Lord creating evil? In the book of Daniel, chapter 9 and verse 13, as it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil is come upon us. Now this is when Judah was in Babylon. Daniel was a prince of Judah. Okay. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us. Yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore hath the, God, hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works, which he doeth, for we obeyed not his voice. So how can the Lord our God be righteous in all his works when he creates evil? How do we reconcile that? Well, that's what this study is going to be all about. In Joel, chapter 2 and verse 13, and rend or tear, you know, people used to tear their garments, and rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. See, when the Lord repents, it's not the same as what mankind should repent. The Lord doesn't have sin to repent of. Mankind does. When the Lord repents of evil, he's changing his mind. Like when he sent Jonah unto Nineveh, the capital of Assyria. And he says, if these people will turn from their wickedness, I will repent of destroying this city. And they did. Read the book of Jonah. See, when the Lord repents, it means one thing. When mankind repents, it means something totally different, contrary to what those popular preachers are teaching today. Okay? It's totally different. These people that compare our repenting with God's repentance, I have to wonder if they even know the Lord at all. I, 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 I don't know. In the book of Proverbs, verse 8, and uh, I'm sorry, chapter 8, and verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. Proverbs 15, and verse 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Here's a very interesting verse. Proverbs 16 and verse 4. Um, Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 4. The Lord hath made all things for himself. Yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. And when I get done with this 
series on uh, blindness, I'm going to do something on the days of evil. That's, at least that's my plan. But the Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. I mean, after all, didn't create Satan as an anointed cherub who through his pride fell and became evil? God did not create Satan evil, but Satan was created beautiful and good, and through his pride he fell and became evil. Did the Lord create Satan? Absolutely he created him. But he didn't create him evil now, did he? And I'm going to prove that. So stay with me, please. In Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 11, here's another interesting verse. Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? The Lord has no pleasure in destroying the wicked, but you know, if everybody went to heaven, wouldn't there be more wars in heaven? Oh yeah, probably, certainly. In Amos 5, verses chapter 5 and verses 14 and 15, Seek good and not evil, that ye may live, and so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you, as ye have spoken. Hate the evil and love the good and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. What about the holiness of the Lord? In Isaiah 43 and verse 15, we read, I am the Lord, your Holy One the creator of Israel, your king. In the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1 and verse 13, we read the following. Thou art of pure eyes than to behold evil, and canst not, canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore, lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously, and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devoureth the man that is more righteous than he? See, the Lord has pure, pure eyes than to behold evil, and he can't stand to look upon iniquity or evil, wickedness. So, how is it that a holy, righteous God created evil? Well, let's take a look. In Genesis 1 and verse 4, chapter 1, verse 4, And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. See, the light was good. Genesis chapter 1, verse 10, And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and God saw that it was good. Verse 12, Genesis 1 and verse 12. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Verse 18, Genesis 1, 18. And to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. Verse 21. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, 
and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And of course, the people that are genetically modifying everything, it's not after their kind anymore. They're messing with things they shouldn't be messing with. But that's a side note. Verse 25. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was, wait for it, good. Verse 31. And uh, Genesis 1 and verse 31. Chapter 1, verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. See, God made everything very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So, if God's a holy, righteous God who created everything good originally, and yet God says he created the evil, well, where does this evil stuff, where, where does this evil stuff fit in? If God created everything good, and yet God says he created evil, aren't those contradictory? Well, let's take a look. Let you know, I'm going to let you in on a little secret that's not so secret. Job 38 tells you that the sons of God, the angels, were created before the earth. Okay? Man wasn't created until the sixth day after the earth was created. But the angels were created before the earth. That's why in Job 38 they could shout for joy when the earth was created because they came first. Okay, keep that in mind. Okay, go to Ezekiel 28 verse 1. Ezekiel 28 verse 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. Now, some people say, well, this is just a man. Others will say, well, this is Satan, the power, the real prince behind the man. Personally, I believe it could be both. But, you know, let's take a look. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God. Don't we see that in coming again in the New Testament? Let's take a look real quick at that. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. So this is obviously talking about the second coming. Okay, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any man, by, I'm sorry, let no man, forgive me, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that's today. Boy, is there a falling away. For that day shall not come, except there be a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And some are going to try to tell you that this happened in 70 A.D. when General Titus destroyed the temple but I, I don't know. I don't believe it. 
For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Okay? So he's going to oppose and exalt himself above everything that's called God or that is worshipped. And he's going to sit as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Well, in 70 AD, General Titus, the Roman general who did all the, you know, they, they claim that he did all this stuff. That's the preterists. You ever hear of a preterist church? This is what they're talking about. They're saying that General Titus did this. But the thing is, how can a mere general of the Roman army go into the temple and proclaim, him, proclaim himself to be God? You think the Roman emperor would have a problem doing that? Uh, yeah. Can you imagine an army, a, a, a general in the army, proclaiming himself that he is the grand supreme commander of the world and telling Obama or whoever the next president might be that he's now in charge? He's God? I think the president of the United States would have a problem with that. Don't you think? And yes, the emperor of Rome, who was a lot more powerful than Obama ever will be, as far as in being in charge of the country, would not have let a mere general sit in the temple proclaiming himself that he is God. Wouldn't have happened. So when these people tell you in 70 AD that all this was fulfilled, impossible. So there's seems to me that there will be a temple made with hands. The Jews will probably do this. You know, but that's just my opinion. So let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling or first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Let's go back to Ezekiel. 28 and verse 2. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. Okay? There is no secret they can hide from thee. Who could have been wiser than Daniel? Think about that. With thy wisdom and thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasuries. I'm sorry, tr into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches and thy heart. Thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, therefore, behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. Is this just talking about just a mere man? Or the power behind a man, which is Satan. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before them that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man, and no God, in the hand of them, in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, 
and say unto him, Here's the meat and potatoes, people. Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. What man was in Eden, the garden of God? Adam, right? Seth, Cain, and a few others, maybe, you know, Cain and Abel, Seth, Eve, Adam. But who sealed up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty, the house been in Eden, the garden of God? Obviously not the king of Tyrus. He wasn't even around back then. He didn't exist until probably a thousand years later, I'm guessing, on the timeline. But he didn't exist until after the flood of Noah. The Garden of Eden didn't exist after the, the flood of Noah, to my knowledge. I don't believe. That's my opinion. So who is this? Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. This one was created, not born. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. This is talking about an angel. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. He covered God's throne. The mercy seat in Leviticus. With the two angels that faced each other with their wings. This one was one of them. The anointed cherub that covered God's throne. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. What man was in the holy mountain of God? And the answer is none at this time. You know, maybe Enoch, maybe Elijah, maybe, I don't know. But they're not anointed cherubs that covered. They were not upon the holy mountain of God, the average man. No. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect. There we go. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. Till iniquity was found in thee. See, even Satan was perfect in his ways from the day that he was created until iniquity, sin, wickedness, evil was found in him. Did you catch that? See, everything God made was good. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast on the, upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy uh, merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. War in heaven, people. Didn't we read about that? Violence. War is violence. There was war in heaven. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. 
Satan was cast to the earth, right? I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before the kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. See, God created Satan good. But then, because of his pride, he was lifted up, and he fell. He became evil. Yes, God created Satan, originally, a good, anointed cherub. But he fell and became evil. So technically, God created the evil. I hope that makes sense. God created everything good, and then his creation rebelled against him and turned to evil. I guess we should go to Isaiah 14, chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives, whose captains they, captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard, barn, hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased, the Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruleth the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. The whole world is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee and the cedars of Lebanon saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller, no axemen, you know, nobody cutting down the trees, since thou art laid down, no feller has come up against us. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations, all that shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread unto thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. In the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that shall see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroy the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? See, Satan, through the power of sin, made us prisoners. That's a, that would be an interesting story. I touched on that a little bit in uh, part one of the blindness. All the kings of the nation, even all of them, lie in glory, every one 
in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with the sword that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under the foot. Under feet, I'm sorry. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name of the remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water. I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. A besom is a type of broom. I will sweep it with the broom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. Yep. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? And you know what? 20% of the English language minimum comes from the Latin. And there are the Hebrew roots people that will tell you Lucifer doesn't belong here because it's a Latin word. Yet English is 20% Latin, derived from 20% of the English language is derived originally from Latin. And they'll say that Lucifer, because it's a Latin word, doesn't belong in the English language. Well, taco doesn't belong in the English language either because it's Spanish, right? Or quesadilla. You know, oh, that's Spanish. That doesn't belong in the English language, right? You know, so quit using it. Sushi, Japanese, don't use it, right? So what these con artists will do, they'll take the word morning star and insert it and say, Oh, how art thou fallen from heaven, O morning star? And when you look in uh, Revelation 22, Jesus says he is the morning star. Be careful, people. The complete Jewish Bible does re deletes, in Revelation 22, deletes the name Jesus and put in Yeshua, and they'll say, Yeshua, the morning star. I, Yeshua, am the morning star. And then when you go to Isaiah 14, it says, How art thou falling from heaven, O morning star? Thus they take Jesus, try to make you think Jesus is Yeshua, and then Yeshua turns into the morning star, and then the next thing you know, Yeshua is going to the grave, is going to be have worms spread underneath him and worms are going to cover him and he fell from heaven he's going to be cut down to the ground and they apply all these things that belong to Satan and try to tell you it's Jesus or Yeshua watch out for these wicked people watch out for them people because you know what they're going to try to ruin and destroy your faith. In this King James Bible, so that ye, we will worship the beast and take his mark if we're still here. How long will it be? I don't know. Some people say, well, we won't be here for the pre-trib rapture. Well, maybe, maybe not. Maybe it won't happen for another 70 or 80 or 100 or 200 or 300 years. Maybe we won't live to this long enough to see all this happen. But if you do, just know the Bible is here for a warning to us as an instruction. And that's why they keep changing everything. That's why there's 666 different versions of the Bible. They want to destroy your faith. So, did the Lord create evil? Absolutely. The Lord created everything good and his creation, 
that was originally created good fell, became evil. So technically, the Lord created evil. But he didn't create it originally as evil. He created everything originally as good. But then, through their pride and their wickedness, they fell. You know, have you ever heard heard it said, you know, babies are born innocent and, you know, then they turn to evil? Well, think about that. I'm not saying it's true. It's just, you know, it's a popular saying, so... All right, well, this is, uh, no, let me take, read one more thing. So when we read in Exodus chapter 4 and verse 11, And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? You see, the Lord creates all things. Does the Lord make people blind on purpose? I don't know. But the Lord creates them, and sometimes people just come out blind. So I'm going to try to finish up the New Testament part of the blindness study as my next one, and then I'm going to try to do the day of evil. And uh, like I say, I work a full-time job, and sometimes it's really difficult to find time to do all this and answer everybody. So I appreciate everybody that, you know, bears with me, gives me the encouragement. Um, all glory to Jesus, you know. I do this as a volunteer. I don't ask for money or anything. I've had many, many people um, accuse me of doing this for money. Well, I'll tell you what, if I do this for money, I'm a total, complete and total failure, except for the, um, uh, my one special listener out there that uh, sent me a computer and some stuff for the ministry. I want to thank her greatly and uh, appreciate it, you know. I didn't ask for it. It was just sent. So what can I tell you? Well, Jesus said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that is Jesus who is the Christ, in whose precious name I pray, amen.